Hi, I'm Hazel, and if you're like me and you've been leveling a new character lately post-scaling changes, you might be noticing some differences. Here are 10 tips to help you level more smoothly, efficiently, and quickly in a post 7.3.5 world. Number 10. This is more of a warning than a tip, but if you are leveling an allied race character with the intention of getting heritage armor, do not use recruiter friend levels on that character. It will disqualify you. Having said that, do feel free to use heirlooms. Equipping heirloom armor and weapons will not disqualify your character from receiving heritage armor, and it makes things quite a bit faster, you know, 50% faster to be specific. So if you have heirlooms or the gold to get yourself some heirlooms, I do recommend wearing them. I don't feel like it makes leveling too fast. You're still gonna have lots of time to enjoy your experience, so slap those on. Number nine, speaking of heirlooms, don't forget that you can enchant your heirlooms. This was a big thing back in the day before the heirloom tab came into effect, and then it kind of fell out of vogue because leveling with heirlooms was just so blindingly fast anyways that it was kind of a waste of gold. But now I would say we're not really in blindingly fast leveling territory anymore, so you are going to get your gold's worth out of a couple of enchants. I'm personally using the Warlords of Draenor versatility enchants because I find that they scale pretty well, and I do feel like I am killing mobs and leveling faster than I was before I put the enchants on my gear. So you can enchant your neck, cloak, rings, and weapon, and you do that after you have created the armor from your heirloom tab. Number eight. Now with the scaling changes, there is now more choice than ever before as to where to level at any given time. And there's lots of ways to make that decision. You could level in the purple zones. You could level in the ones that you think are pretty. You could avoid all zones that include goblins if you think there's some kind of a conspiracy and they're gonna get you. But if you wanna be leveling as efficiently as possible, I recommend starting with the level 10 through 20 zones. And then once you've done those, move on to the 20 through 40 zones, making sure to hit the zones of that level range on both continents. So as an Alliance character, I leveled not only in Westfall and Duskwood, but also in Lochmadan in the Wetlands and in Silver Pine Forest in Ashenvale. The reason for that is that when these zones were put together in Cataclysm, they were designed to be completed by characters that did not have any mount training or that had the slower mount training once you get into the 20 plus zones. That means that there's going to be less travel time between quest objectives, less travel time between quest hubs, and generally you can just be on your way faster. Number seven, avoid vehicle quests, at least for now. Right out of the gate of the scaling changes going into effect, it seems that many vehicle quests are experiencing some bizarre scaling issues that makes them quite a bit harder than it should be to complete them. For example, the harvest rudder thing in Westfall where you get into a big harvest mech and you go swat your way through 25 little mini harvest reapers. I was too stubborn to stop once I had started, but I probably should have stopped. This is almost certainly not intended and will hopefully be fixed very soon, but for now, if you're finding yourself in a vehicle and you're wondering if you're just gonna live and die there, maybe just get out and move on. Number six, if you're gonna do dungeons, just do them once. A speedy dungeon run that includes several dungeon quests is worth your time, but any kind of dungeon run that does not include a bunch of quests right now, probably not. The experience that you get from doing dungeons is pretty subpar to what you get from just questing out in the world, so I do not recommend the old strategy of just sitting in a capital city and spam queuing for random dungeons. It will get you there eventually, but it will not get you there very quickly. Number five, make use of add-ons to speed up your inventory management. For example, I like to use an add-on called Auto Vendor, and when I open up a vendor dialog, it will automatically sell not only all the trash, which is great and very convenient, but also anything else that I have designated as junk and soulbound gear that is below a certain item level. When you've been questing for a while and your bags are bursting and you just want to get rid of it all so you can get back on the road, something like this is very, very handy. The other add-on that I would recommend for this problem is Trade Skill Master, specifically the mailing functions. What I can do here is I can really quickly designate which items are valuable and have a lot of them kind of auto designated, for example, trade goods above a certain value. And then I go to the mailbox and I press the mail button and then it all goes to my bank hall without me having to individually pick and choose and sort which things I wanna keep and sell and which things I wanna vendor. Trade Skill Master is a bit of an adventure to get set up for the first time, but I do have a full playlist of guides to walk you through it and it is very much worth your time to do so. Number four, while you're leveling, pick up the herbalism and the mining professions. Even if you have no interest in continuing to herb or mine, or even if you don't want to sell the herbs and ore that you get, they're not really worth all that much anymore. But the thing that you want here is that little hit of experience you get every time you gather a node, that adds up quite a bit. And when you're out questing in the world, you're gonna see lots of nodes. You don't have to really go far out of your way. And that gathering experience goes farther than you think it will, especially considering that you don't actually have to give anything up to get it. If you reach max level and you decide that you now want cooler professions, you can just delete them, you know, guilt-free, it's okay. <laughs>
Number three, if you're in the area, consider starting your day with the Cataclysm cooking and fishing dailies out of Stormwind and Orgrimmar. These quests are mostly travel time based, so they are very fast to do once you get flying. And I was doing them starting from level 20 just because I wanted to spend more time bonding with my purple void bird. Those will scale all the way up to level 80. So if you're stuck in the 58 through 80-ish quagmire and you're just looking for something else to do for a few minutes, you know, they're there. Tip number two. If you happen to be the kind of World of Warcraft players that has level 25 pets, whenever you happen across one of these lower level battle pet dailies, you should do it. You get a good amount of experience. That experience does scale up with your level, but the actual battle pets don't scale up. So you can just go fight the snake lady and ruin her poor level three snakes. I definitely would not say that this is worth going out of your way for, but if you're going to be in the area of one of the battle pet dailies anyways, they are very, very fast to do. So consider knocking it out before you keep going. My last tip is to carefully consider your leveling entertainment. If you have done this a few times before, you can probably level with one eye closed, and if you're double monitoring it, you can get a pretty good groove going depending on what you have on your second monitor. Now, I obviously recommend my stellar Tuesday and Friday live streams, <laughs> but there's a bounty of really chill content online that you can kind of consume while leveling to help keep you sane. My top three picks for during leveling entertainment are definitely watching gaming streams, listening to podcasts, and then chatting with my guild on Discord. You want low impact stuff that's not going to distract you so much that you find yourself drowning in the bottom of a lake. I really love watching foreign TV shows on Netflix, but I found that I can't do that while leveling because anything with subtitles slows me down by at least 50%. So those are my best leveling tips. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any great tips that I missed in this video, please put them in the comments so I can read them. I'm still working on my Void Elf. Let me know what you think and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!